Fellow citizens, 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 citizens. The world is very different now. Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching Scarfing Scarves, and welcome to the 84th installment of last week Lolita News. At the top of the segment, some of you will ask why the frack I'm bringing this up after everything's finally quieted down. Others know that that's like asking why you're looking for the arsonist after the fire's gone out. With that said, I still did not want to make this video. Laura's an adult who can handle her own shit, and she does not need me writing to her aid on a weekly basis. The United Kingdom is still irradiated from the last time I came to Lore's defense, so this is not just for the sake of defending my friend again. In fact, Lore is in my DMs begging me not to, and this has been incredibly stressful to write because I know she's been through a lot these past weeks, and she did what she thought was right, and now she just wants the entire ordeal to be over. However, I don't think I'll be able to sleep at night if I don't do this, and I don't know what kind of friend I'd be if I stood by while this was happening. I have to do what I think is right too, and I hope she understands. Because the moment a group of cynical opportunists backed her into a corner, kicked the shit out of her, and had her grovel for them through the public square, the moment they dressed up their abuse with words like accountability and unsatisfied by her prostration, abused her kindness to get her even further down into the dirt, it became my problem. But the moment this community praised what happened as what true accountability looks like, it became yours. This is bigger than lore or our friendship now, and someone's going to have to say something about it before it sets a dangerous precedent. And considering I wake up every day and choose violence, I think it's high time I turn off that scrap of my soul that objects to metaphorically mutilating someone for pissing me off. With any luck, I'll use this petty sadism for the public good for once in my godforsaken life. Which brings us to part one, what in the unholy corn dogs happened? To which the answer is, it all started on Instagram. And specifically with a Lolita fashion YouTuber by the name of Lovely Lore. Some people have no idea what I'm talking about, so here's the basics. Lolita fashion is a Victorian inspired street fashion started in the 1970s in Japan. Further info here, 10 out of 10 recommend this video as any explanation of mine is sure to send you screaming into the night. Meanwhile, for those who were sent here by an algorithm that clearly thinks you're weird enough to be on my channel but don't know where you are, Lovely Lore is essentially the largest Lolita YouTuber on the platform. She is known primarily for making fun, inoffensive, aggressively positive, and inclusive material, and generally speaking, she and I are, at best, like oil and water. Which is to say that she works really fracking hard to be a nurturing force for good in this community, and I am not above stabbing someone out of boredom. This assessment of her character will be relevant later, but for now, I want you to keep it in the back of your mind that to anyone with a functioning brain and eyes, this woman has contributed hundreds of hours of inclusive, uplifting content, she has been the welcome wagon when others have grown tired of answering questions from newbies, and she is a driving force for presenting Lolita fashion in a way that makes it easier for all Lolitas to share their passion with friends and family in a straightforward way through her well-edited and easy-to-understand videos on a variety of Lolita topics. Put Frankly, it is because of people like Lore that Lolita fashion has become more recognizable in the States to the extent that now mall security guards are coming up to me to tell me that they like my Lolita dress. You used to have to be a level 5 weeb to even know what Lolita fashion was, and now I'm getting chased down by Paul Blart mall cop so that he can say something genuinely nice about the way I look. Lore is also a leftist woman in a lesbian relationship living in Canada. This is going to be relevant later, so keep it in the back of your brain. Side Side note, I tell you all of this not just to defend Lore, who I will have criticism for later, but to give you the appropriate context for just how bizarre and nonsensical things quickly became. So now that you have the type of person we are dealing with in mind, what exactly happened? Well, let's watch! I am so sorry to my black followers, black lolitas, the black community, 
any person of color as well as the Jewish community that my actions have hurt. I never want to hurt any of you. Oh my God, what did she do? I accidentally liked a photo of a makeup influencer at the Capitol riots. Girl, I thought you killed someone. And you're seriously going to tell me that this hostage video was taken to apologize for whoopsie tapping a fracking photo that anyone with a working prefrontal cortex would know was a mistake? What are we supposed to do? Lock up your thumbs? This photo was so obviously of a trunk and no leftist would like it on purpose, but wait, there's more. I I have no memory of seeing this photo or liking it and I would never do this intentionally. All right, so we're done here now. Anyone who's ever interacted with this woman or her content would know this was an accident. She leans so far to the left she might fall over, Trump nauseates her, and anyone who would say otherwise is performing a reach that might require medical attention. Except this is the internet and we cannot have nice things. So when the screen cap of the post she accidentally liked started circulating, people treated it as an open invitation to spend speculate as to whether or not she kicks puppies and subsists off the blood of homeless paraplegics who also have AIDS. Which brings us to part two, how did social media react? Before this woman in the stocks video was published, there was the initial reaction to her accidental like on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Facebook saw whole threads full of popcorn memes, outrage, and people taking the opportunity to share their disparaging takes to a receptive audience. Instagram spread the post through stories, and Twitter, being Twitter, Twitter proceeded to take a minor incident and blow it up into something that would justify dehumanizing their target so they could take out their anger issues without having to deal with the icky aftermath of smearing human blood across the walls to pass the time. These types of people on Twitter usually like to keep the high ground while pretending they're saints, so it's really a lot easier for them if they can take their target and twist them into some kind of mustache twirling psychopath. Side note, super unrelated, I'm sure, but in this instance, one of her more annoying detractors did in fact exchange currency for, acquire, and then sell Nazi-inspired clothing for profit while admonishing Lore for accidentally clicking a picture. That's just a neat little story I like to tell. No reason, really. I'm sure we can expect them to make a 14-minute long video lamenting all their sins any second now. Oh wait, they hid their apology in a sad little sub-thread. Does it smell like hypocrite in here, or is it just her? And to quote the Nazi gear buying two-faced little glue sniffer herself, it's real cute how some of y'all chuckle fucks think we don't see you. Did I make you listen to that because I personally cannot stand that level of hypocrisy? Yes! Is it still a good example of the equally imperfect human beings going out of their way to pretend an anti-Trump woman is secretly a QAnon worshipping white supremacist because she again mistakenly clicked a single picture? Yes, and in this instance they had a lot of fun taking a leftist woman in a lesbian relationship living in Canada and making her out to be Kawaii Mussolini. This is the funnel of depravity that took every Everything I've told you about lovely Lore, all her hundreds of hours of positive contributions to this community, waited against a single twitch of her thumb and came out with... Is Lore evil? Probably not. Is she ignorant and racist? Most definitely. Did this writer shove her entire head up her butt to type this out? Probably not. Is she wanted in several counties for humping children's birthday cakes? Most definitely. I can make wild accusations too, you know, but I'm sure old Kate Crotch would like me to give further context, so let's look at what happened on social media right before the apology video. In the wake of screenshots of Lore's mistaken click, she made the following posts on Facebook and Twitter. In one, she apologizes, emphasizes that she does not support Trump, and then asks her followers to please tell her if they ever see that she's interacting with any unsafe parties. In another, she explains that the like was a mistake, again she doesn't support Trump, and repeats that she wants to know if anyone notices she's following some gross people. These posts were two minutes apart and generally look like the reaction of a sane person trying to correct the record, and this should have been the end of it. However, this is the internet, so let's see what Twitter had to say. This apology is fucking pathetic. I don't care if a demon possessed your body to make you follow and like that cretin. I also don't believe you because you never truly apologize for working with redacted ass wigs. You have a history of making harmful decisions. Take responsibility, do better. As a Jewish follower of yours, I don't know how to feel. Your apology just disappointed me. I feel like maybe it was accidental, but you don't research who you follow and support. 
I already feel excluded from Lolita, and seeing you support them hurt me. I feel like it's your responsibility to know who you follow, and not something you should be putting on your subscribers and followings to do for you. Honestly, this doesn't seem like you were putting in the effort to do better, IMO. You should really properly apologize for this in a new post because there isn't a single I'm sorry in this one. And I had to find out the context through other means, which makes it feel like you're not directly addressing what happened. Additionally, you should tell your other followers to stop defending you because while accidental, it still happened. I can accept it was accidental, but others feel like this is a consistent pattern of behavior and you should acknowledge their concerns too. I would like to take a moment to remind you that all of this hullabaloo was in fact caused by a misclick and it is being received like they found Lore choking several chickens in a river. I accidentally liked one of these fracking tweets while capping them. And this was but a sample of many other tweets like it, so in the interest of brevity, let's go back and take a look at what we learned. So this one translates to needlessly aggressive meets no forgiveness for an obvious mistake, bringing up poorly defined past wrongdoings, a vague history of harmful decisions, a again, undefined, and then an all caps call to do better because this person sniffs glue and forgot to type in their inside voice. This one claims to have been gravely wounded because they have glass bones and paper skin. This one says that everyone is now responsible to run a full background check on every person and post they interact with, and given that Laura is following roughly 600 people on Instagram, that tracks out to quitting her job and spending the rest of her short life trawling every post and picture for signs of misconduct, presumably followed by being discovered by the local police department gibbering in a closet. Also, how dare she ask her followers for assistance in this endeavor, even though the consequences for fucking up appear to be that she be burned at the stake. This person wants her to apologize more because they didn't like that they had to go looking for what to be outraged about today. They follow that by saying that it would be more convenient if their outrage weren't interrupted by sane people objecting, so could Laura ask her followers to stop defending her? Topping that with, because others feel like this is a consistent pattern of behavior, and you should acknowledge their concerns too. Which is a point where I'm going to have to slow things down, because this is part and parcel for a consistent line of thinking on the left, and it comes in roughly two forms. One, your feelings are always valid, and two, you have a right to be hurt. Which, quite frankly, given that human beings are inherently flawed creatures, and me and my fellow bipeds have walked into glass doors, bounced off, and then yelled at the door, your feelings are not necessarily always valid. Sometimes your feelings feelings are fracking dumb, or hasty, or looking for an outlet when the real systems that make your life feel like shit are too powerful, or out of reach, so you turn the emotional fire hose at the unfortunate fuck who happens to be within yeeting distance. And while it's true that you have a right to be hurt by whatever you want, having the right to something doesn't make the exercise of said right unimpeachable. You also have the right to stick your dick in a toaster, but it's still a stupid thing to do. Also, sometimes people use situations like these to feel superior, or just out of spite, jealousy, or some personal problem, their grievance is entirely insincere, and expecting someone to apologize for every transgression, both real and imagined, is how you get grown adults being forced to grovel because some toddler on Twitter had emotional indigestion. That said, I'd like to take a look at one more comment in which a poster talks about a previous interaction they had with Lore. I always felt very off because a few years back, I had asked her for help regarding spreading awareness over a POC issue. She refused me saying it would make her followers unhappy and that was a huge blow since I had really looked up to her then. It made me feel like her BLM posts were very off slash performative as well, but I wasn't sure if I was just in my head or not. This has completely sealed the deal and confirmed for me though that she really does not care the way she claims to and is absolutely performative. Okay, so again, we're looking at completely vague accusations. The POC issue could be anything what they asked Lore to do is equally left blank. The poster quickly moves on to accusing Laura of not caring about the concerns of all marginalized people because of one interaction and brands her as a performative ally. Luckily for us, this was one of the posters who couldn't resist dragging up old screen caps to feed their fellow detractors, so let's see what the actual context was. This was your response when I asked if you could signal boost an info post about a school shooting in our community. I tried to be understanding before, but it feels like this wasn't big enough for you to get gain allyship brownie points, so you didn't post it. And let's look at Lore's capped response from that day. I've gotten requests like this before, and though I sympathize, I have to decline for a couple reasons. 
My blog focuses on my personal life, cute fashion, and positivity. And topics that are completely different in nature might be upsetting or jarring to my following. Also, if I do one signal boost, I end up getting a lot more requests. I'm super sorry and wish you the best of luck, but I want to keep my blog personal and happy. Bluntly put, the only mistake Lore made in this instance was responding at all. Her reasons for not signal boosting a school shooting on her blog are easily understandable, and for those of you scratching your head as to why, let me propose the following situation. One of the things I heard most from Black Lolitas during the BLM protests in 2020 was that they were tired. They had always been tired, and that if they had to see one more white ally thrusting news of yet another black body being maimed or hurt or killed into their feeds, they were going to lose their minds. Many of them had lost their mental escapes to the same type of posts, and they felt there was nowhere they could go on the internet where they could just take a break. Now imagine one of Lore's black followers was taking such a break in the days of Tumblr being relevant. Imagine they're just escape scrolling their way through a feed they had come to expect to be emotionally safe. Now imagine that in the middle of posts about frilly pink dresses and Rila fucking Kuma, there was a news article about more people that looked like them being gunned down in the safety of their fucking classrooms. This is what this poster has borne a grudge over? That Lore didn't immediately surrender the keys to her social media and blindside her following with a mass shooting? There is a separation between places it's okay to post tragedies like that and places it's not for a reason. And if this poster wasn't so busy developing petty grudges against complete strangers, maybe they and their two brain cells could have had a committee meeting on whether or not they should remember to breathe. I say this because only chronic hypoxia could explain being that ass blasted over something so dumb. Think fast, lady. That second brain cell's looking woozy, the other's chewing on the table, and I'm taking bets on whether you seize up or just fall over like a wounded gazelle. Which brings us to part three, once you've started apologizing, try and try again. Would you believe me if I told you that the first thing Lore did after posting that apology was apologize for her apology? Would you be surprised to find out that her apology had grown to encompass every living thing above and below the troposphere? Would you be willing to help her mount a space program so that she can apologize to the citizens of Nylar 6 in their mother tongue, which scientists believe to be a complicated system of shrieks and fart noises. And would you be remotely shocked to find out that Twitter took one look at her prostrating herself at their feet and decided now was the perfect opportunity to kick her in the face. So she was face down begging for mercy and... Your apology is missing two key things as a prominent figure. One, what makes this apology any different from any other white person who's given the same apology? Two, what can your black followers look forward to in holding you accountable for your actions going forward? Can you ask your followers to stop defending you over this? Thank you for apologizing, but it's not mine to accept. There is a lot of people speaking over POC and accepting this apology for them, and I think it deserves being addressed. How do you accidentally liked something? Sounds like you do not want to take full responsibility. I have IG, and never once have I accidentally tapped heart on something. I do not even think it is possible to accidentally heart or follow someone, especially on IG. Okay, so to address the last first, do you know how you accidentally heart something on Instagram? The same way those cheese encrusted nubs you call fingers manage to type out how do you accidentally liked something as if you've never heard the age old wisdom those in glass houses shouldn't be ugly little dimwits. Maybe read through your own sentences before you lecture someone else for an easily made mistake. To tackle the second, it should be noted that Lore immediately capitulated and said, yes, please allow POC to be hurt. I want forgiveness, but I understand not every everyone will be ready or willing to at all. Please allow them to make the decision on their own and not try to argue with them about it. It will only hurt more and I don't want that. Which to me looks a lot like a woman being pelted with tomatoes telling her friends and family to please stop interfering with tomato distribution. And going back to the first poster, can we all agree that ominously promising to hold this instance over Lore's head in perpetuity is incredibly creepy? Don't you have some small children to scare? Or did you eat too many ding-dongs during COVID and now you can't creep out the window of your subterranean basement 
it like you used to. Back to the topic at hand, eventually one of Lore's followers mentions that she shouldn't be so hard on herself, and another commenter responds by saying, she clearly said if you're not black, don't speak over us. Which opens the door to a very important part of this installment. I know this is going to be uncomfortable for some viewers to hear, but commenting on a public post in an even-keeled fashion while addressing no one but the OP is not speaking over anyone. And secondly, the idea that black people somehow are the sole owners of outrage over a YouTuber accidentally clicking a Trumpkin's post is really fracking weird. Was there a meeting I missed to decide who could be outraged? Because last I checked, there were a frack ton of children locked in cages and were still not returned to their parents, so I feel like the Latino community deserves at least an invite to the round table. Also, the whole shithole countries thing was kind of yikes here too, so let's add all citizens regardless of race from those. All Muslims are going to have to be invited too, what with Trump casting them as terrorists and initiating the Muslim ban. And you know, I really hope you have a fuck ton of chairs for this thing, because the list is getting long and I haven't even gotten to his association with Mike Pence, who still stands gay conversion therapy. Are you taking notes, Lore? Because I think you're going to need to write an apology version of the Encyclopedia Dramatica, heavy on the drama, because this shit has gotten entirely out of hand. Also, one more time for the people who went cross-eyed while I was making a point, saying words in a free and open forum of discussion is not speaking over marginalized people. The personal perspectives of marginalized people should be heard and considered. That does not mean that marginalized people should be the only ones talking ever. That's how you get Tumblr culture pre-porn eradication, and that brand of psychological inbreeding is not something I would wish on anyone other than the type of people who use uwu outside of dedicated uwu zones. Fuck your outdated cat face, Team XD shall rise again, and when we do, all you uwu degenerates are going straight into the wood chipper. With that uncalled for aggression aside, you've made it to part four, the YouTuber apology video, please stop, she's already dead. Do you remember when Japanese idol culture seemed to have this trend of female idols being caught having boyfriends, their fans immediately going ballistic, and then the idols being forced to shave their heads and cry on camera for any hope of calming the gnashing teeth and shrieking of their fans? This video is 10% more uncomfortable to watch than that. I want you to keep in mind that she's already been deploying apologies like she's operating a Gatling gun, mowing down every comment section in sight like a blind man with a weed whacker. I'm pretty sure she's begged forgiveness from at least one shrubbery, and still the internet is not satisfied. And my sources report her DMs are stuffed to the breaking point with outrage that cannot be quelled, so she does what someone who gives a fuck what people think does. She shaves her head and pleads with humanity to forgive her gravest of sins. And by that, I mean metaphorical head shaving, and by sins, I mean incredibly benign shit not remotely worthy of wringing your hands over as if you just murdered a man with a rolling pin and your neighbor is asking to borrow it to make a pie. It's just strawberry jam, you might whisper, palming the now bloody handle, barely concealing your horror at the slowly cooling body on the floor. Mavis stares up at you with unseeing eyes. She will never steal your blueberry muffin recipe again. Where were we? Oh yeah, Lore's apologizing for her apology, which is so painful to watch, I just had to have an out-of-body experience just to contend with it. Now at this point, we've covered many of the things she's mentioned in this video, so we're going to ignore those. And now, you've made it to the point where an adult woman sincerely apologizes for squatting and doing the Harlem Shake. Sounds like a joke, but that would presume any of her accusers had a sense of humor, and unfortunately, I'm dead serious. In the past, I have appropriated and and benefited from black culture by not researching the history behind memes and poses before recreating them, and I am so sorry for my ignorance. This pose is known as a prison pose, rap squat, or jail pose, and I was unaware of its origins from prison culture as well as black culture. First, prison culture is not black culture, so whoever told you to say that is full yikes. I saw several black commenters who were really offended by equating prison culture with black culture. Second, what you're doing is widely known as a slob squat, which is mostly associated with white Russians in a tracksuit hunkering down on street corners. And third, Third, I can't believe we've entered the timeline of social media where people are actually being asked to apologize for bending their knees in a politically incorrect manner. Keep those gams at 90 degrees or more, Karen, or I swear to God I will get you fired. Please note that Lore did not come up with these ridiculous ideas herself. I know for a fact some of the previously addressed Twitter fanatics were in her DMs making demands
demands on what she needs to say to earn their forgiveness. And in a near perfect instance of the woke Ouroboros, we've come full circle to having her say something that's actually offensive, see tying prison culture to black culture, and also incredibly dumb, see insisting that black people now have the exclusive rights to pop a squat. You should be encouraging more people to get down and pray like that, because it's going to take the mother, the son, and the Holy Ghost to unfuck whatever blunt force trauma made you think this was remotely reasonable. However, if you think this is the most laughable thing you've ever seen someone beg forgiveness over, prepare to be wrong, because she was also told to apologize for doing the Harlem Shake. Think I'm kidding? I also benefited from black culture when I recreated the Harlem Shake and made a Lolita version. I did this because it was a trending meme, but I did not look into the origins of where it came from, and I am so sorry that I did this. I have since taken this video down. Well, wouldn't you know that I looked up the origins myself? And wouldn't you just laugh if I told you that the Harlem Shake meme was actually created by a quote, Brooklyn-based Latino producer, Bauer, and quote, Filthy Frank, a Japanese singer-songwriter. If either of these people look black to you, you have glaucoma. And just to dust off ancient meme history for the people who've had a smartphone since they were six, the Harlem Shake was a meme where you would take a short snippet of Bauer's song, wait for the bass to drop, and then do a jump cut of everyone in the room going absolutely ballistic because that's what we thought was quality entertainment at the time. The trend was bigger than Gandhi, more viral than Corona, and it was not uncommon for people to walk in on their roommate trying to film one with everyone dressed like it was the world's tackiest orgy. The fucking army did one and it was good. And while I can hear you guys in the back whining that there's a dance move called the Harlem Shake, neither the original video or any that I ever saw incorporated that movement, so at the end of the day, we're looking at two things that are named the same but imply vastly different things. Hey, you know what else has that? Lolita. Lolita fashion? A fanciful feminine expression with frilly dresses and feminist roots. Lolita by Nabokov? A nauseating tale of how a grown man kidnapped and raped a child. I guess Lolitas really need to apologize for appropriating pedo culture. Please note I'm not being serious, but some of you need the simplest of examples or it won't penetrate that thick wad of gum you call a brain. Chew on that for a little bit and you might come up with how it's patently ridiculous that a Lolita fashion YouTuber had her DM so full of this kind of tripe that she essentially apologized for playing the 2013 equivalent of Pokemon Go. That's Animal Crossing for those in our recent timeline, and Among Us for those in the current one, both of which are now outdated. I don't know what the fuck the lot of you are up to now, and I don't care to find out. Now, given that we don't have all fracking day to document lore apologizing to the trees for appropriating their oxygen, let's look at a few key points before we finish this section. The three remaining points in her apology go like so. One, apologizing for trying to feed feature Black Lolitas on her channel during Black History Month, two, apologizing for having used someone as a Lolita reference in the past who was recently found out to have worn Nazi gear to a goth club, and three, apologizing for supposedly being complicit with the behavior of a wig brand that I will not mention because I don't want to send any business their way. Let's call them shiny ass wigs, or SAW for short, and let's break down point one, what did Lord do? In 2018, I made a post on Facebook asking for submissions from Black Lolitas as well as Black people who wear J fashion and I wanted them to share their stories and any struggles they may have faced with alternative fashion. She says she got messages from moderators of Black J fashion communities saying that her video could spread harm to the Black community and even though the video wasn't going to be monetized, they were not happy that she could gain views or subscribers from such a video. Because of this, I decided to postpone the project indefinitely due to the concerns that were brought up to me. So featuring black lolitas on your channel who consented and specifically asked to be there is now problematic. And to make things even better, Lord then apologizes for not doing more for the black community in that time, even though it sounds like members from the black community directly tried to stop her from doing more in that time. Meanwhile, in going back to the point that the moderators were concerned that Lore would profit off the video via views and subscribers, and thus it was bad, this is a perfect time to bring up that I have seen many complaints that I don't feature Black Lolita guests on my channel, which sounds horrendous until you find out that I don't feature any guests on my channel. The only way you're going to end up in a video here is if you do something really, really embarrassing, and let me tell you, you will not like my coverage. So in summary, if you don't feature Black Lolitas because you don't have guests on your channel, you are bad and discriminatory, but if you do try to feature Black Lolitas on your channel, you are obviously trying to profit off Black bodies, how dare you go think about 
about what you've done. But Tyler! I hear some concussed gerbil squeak from the filth-infested hole I presume they crawled out of. Laura and you have collaborated before. To which I would say yes, for a once-a-year April Fool's video where I write her a script that could have been sourced directly from the darkest pits of an asylum, this is not a featured guest-style interview. I have her say things that make about as much sense as a shaken hamster, and finally, she is one of my closest friends, I run a channel about drama, and I do not fucking do interviews, so the only way to get featured on here is to be my best friend in the world, or to fuck up so royally you'll have to change your goddamn name to escape the fallout. Out. Regardless of the group they belong to, people I don't know from fucking Adam are not entitled to my platform, my time, or my spit if I find them on fire. That said, let's move on to point two, wherein Laura apologized for using someone as a Lolita reference who was later found to have worn Nazi gear to a goth club. This is one of those where you really are asking for this woman to be omniscient. To know ahead of time that some rando in the Lolita community will eventually be outed to have worn a profoundly stupid outfit to a goth club, and then to blame Lore for having apparently not consulted her crystal ball out of laziness, then expecting her to apologize as if she had handed said rando a Hitler stash and access to a disturbingly large oven. Before pictures came out of this person wearing their sexified Nazi gear, the only thing she was known for was outlandish outfits posted in Closet of Frills. She is not remotely famous in the Lolita community, meaning no one outside of her local goth scene knew about her bullshit until she was goose-stepping her ass into a world of trouble. Lore merely mentioning her as a fashion example in passing before it came out does not make her somehow culpable for the actions of a rando. And if it did, by that same logic, every person on Instagram and Closet of Frills who ever liked or interacted with her photos now owes the Lolita community a lengthy apology. 14 minutes and five different posts each should do it. But please be aware I'll be using this as evidence of your secret sinister intentions until the day you die. The too long didn't listen version, isn't it funny how it turns out a bunch of the people roasting lore for accidentally liking a Trumpkin post consciously and purposefully like the photos of a woman known for wearing Nazi gear? Finally, this brings us to the last point in this section, criticism over Lore having worked with shiny-ass wigs in the past via posing for pictures in their product. Out of everything we've seen here today, this is the only criticism that is remotely valid. An influencer does carry responsibility to do their research on a brand before putting their name alongside it and promoting it to their fans. I can think of an example in recent memory wherein a specific influencer decided that didn't apply to them and things got very very messy with a rather slimy company using her to promote themselves in the Lolita community. She didn't step away, and it ended poorly for everyone. So back to Lore's case, shiny ass wigs had a gross habit of lightening the skin tones of their black models in editing. And in one instance, promoting a wig on a black drag model with a heavy watermelon theme that they called the Jezebel. Jezebel is, historically speaking, a really fracking offensive term designating black women as promiscuous and un feminine, and the whole watermelon theme put on top of that was an interesting choice for a company already knee-deep in racial controversy. So after she apologized profusely for her ignorance of everything listed above, what did Lore have to say? In 2015, I was in talks with to possibly become a brand ambassador for them, and at this time I was not aware of any of their racist behavior. I was involved with one promotional photo shoot for them, and before those photos were released to the public, I was made aware of some of this information. When I brought up these concerns with the company and wanting to distance myself from them, they repeatedly contacted me trying to dispute this information, and made me feel unsafe to speak about them publicly because of a contract I had signed with them. At this time, the company had my home address as well as my phone number. I was able to get out of becoming a brand ambassador for them, but they still own the photos that they took of me and still are able to use them. I stayed quiet for a long time and continued to use their wigs out of guilt because of the way that they had made me feel when speaking to me. However, in 2016, I moved to Canada and I no longer live at the address that they have and I do not have the phone number that they have. And I should have spoken about this much sooner. I now understand a lot more about defamation laws than I did then. 
I should have made my stance against them known much sooner and without people prompting me for it. And I am so sorry for that. So in summary, when Lore found out about shiny ass wigs bullshit, she broke their working relationship, dealt with harassing calls for her trouble, felt she couldn't talk about any of it because she's working class and doesn't exactly have the pockets for a defamation lawsuit. And by the time she felt safe in Canada, that shit was such ice cold tea, it would take a goddamn microwave to make it palatable again. And any tea drinker knows that's a mortal sin against leaf juice, punishable by having a British granny look in your direction and sigh. If you do not have a British granny, one will be assigned to you. If you do, well, why don't you rub it in already? Some of us were raised on Lipton and lies. Back to the realms of sanity, it sounds to me like Lore handled this as best she could at the time. She has apologized for her oversights, and as I have addressed up to this point every major grievance held against her, I'd say it's all time we go and enjoy ourselves a nice cup of Part five, don't read the comments. How was her apology received? This woman prostrated herself repeatedly. She essentially apologized for breathing and begged the community for their forgiveness whilst calling off anyone who would support her so that her detractors could have an unobstructed shot at her head. A more thorough, sincere, and utterly devastated apology I have never seen in my life to the extent that if one of the people in her DMs had told her to crucify herself, I'm pretty sure I'd have to tackle this woman to get the spikes out of her hands. She really couldn't have lowered her head any further without breaking out a shovel, so what did the internet have to say? The following represent the three most common subsets of comments on YouTube and Twitter. The first being... Only just started, but saying you have no recollection of liking this post is a little dismissive, given that you admit you regularly blindly like things and were in fact following and aware of this makeup artist. So the fact that you may not recall doing it is a little dismissive. Only just started the video, but it's what you keep repeating and it's rubbing a long time black fan the wrong way. Just a little more self-aware accountability owning of your actions would go far, especially because you admit your initial response was dismissive. Video finished. My reaction? Eh. Let's completely ignore the fact that this Pratt says dismissive three times in the space of five sentences and they apparently aren't in possession of apostrophes or spell check, but they're coming after lore for repetition and mistakes as they go on to say, IDK, this is just tiring. I definitely noticed the distinct lack of including black lolitas or J fashion collabs, or even boosting or shouting out black creators or the issues they face. Yeah, overall not great at all. Plus I'm seeing other people mention issues not addressed in this video or apologies. The second... Who is she talking about on Instagram? I mean, what pic did she like? And the third type, of which I saw a truly concerning amount of... I love how she quickly takes action and gives the appropriate level of seriousness to the issue. She even takes the time to tell people to be considerate of others and not try to defend her. This is what more YouTubers should be like. And... This is accountability. People do racist things and make less of an apology. You do this for liking a tweet. Hope other social media people take this hint and see how much accountability you actually need. In succession, these three types of comments boil down to people who won't be satisfied until she walks the plank, people who have no idea what the fuck happened, and a scary amount of people who saw a woman put herself in the stocks to be pelted with rotten fruit over a single mistake and decided that this public degradation was what accountability really looks like. And now that you know the entire tale, we're going to make sense of everything we've learned in our final section of the evening, part six, the dangers of an unearned apology, dear God, we have to talk about cancel culture. I would like to take a moment to point out that I am a rabid leftist, so this is not going to be a conservative circle jerk about how cancel culture fuck their mother and freedom of speech is under attack. I believe that a certain amount of intercommunity regulating and accountability is necessary for your social scene not to become a cesspool. My show is an obvious example of calling out bad actors. However, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that sometimes some people can take things just a little bit into the realm of the absurd. And what set me on this path in the first place is a video by Natalie Wynn, aka ContraPoints, titled Canceling, where she essentially writes the entire book on the subject, one of the most insightful takes I've seen to date, worth a watch if you have two hours and a decent supply of cheese doodles and bathtub gin. 
However, we are going to talk about a subset of cancel culture that I haven't seen anyone really cover, entitled simply, The Dangers of an Unearned Apology. The first thing you need to know about apologizing is that to say you're sorry is to admit to having done something wrong. The bigger the apology, the bigger the wrongdoing is presumed to be. And most importantly, once you've apologized for something, you have admitted to your crime. It's damned hard to take back, and generally speaking, people will be more suspicious of you if you attempt to do so. The reason I made this video, despite pushback and with full knowledge that this will make many viewers uncomfortable, is that I believe an unearned apology to be dangerous. More so if uttered by a prominent figure in a community. Because when that prominent figure has their kindness taken advantage of publicly, when they are manipulated into validating their abusers with an admittance of wrongdoing brought on by fabricated charges, they set a precedent in their community that this is what accountability looks like. That accountability is prostration, allowing your detractors to do whatever they want with you and lying prone until their feelings are satisfied. That accountability is being screamed at, ordered around by strangers who see you as a consumable good to be used as they please. That accountability is to do your detractors work for them in telling your friends not to defend you, isolating yourself so you're easier to control, to take their anger out on, or to mold into something they deem acceptable. I say this is not what accountability looks like. This is what abuse looks like. This is what an abusive relationship looks like writ large, becoming parasocial and thus boundless in its potential to harass and make demands of its target. And this is what it looks like when a disturbing number of people in a community decide that this type of parasocial abusive relationship is in any way healthy or normal or remotely anything less than an attempt to isolate a woman from her friends so they can do what they want with her unobstructed. Tell your supporters to stop defending you because it's easier to overwhelm someone who's alone. The similarity between the private abusive relationship between two people and the public parasocial abusive relationship between one person and unknown multitudes honestly shocked me. Isolating the target, unrealistic standards, obsessive monitoring of the target, outsized reactions to small mistakes, threats and intimidation, attempts on the target's part to make amends, small pockets of peace, rinse and repeat until the target leaves or is traumatized by cyclical bouts of abuse, paranoia, and despair. Any attempt by the target to explain themselves is met with more anger or they are gaslit into believing they are the problem. You'll notice that the crime she was accused of escalated at pace with the size and intensity of Lore's apologies. The more she capitulated to their demands, the worse it got, and it is in that pattern that we shall find the root of all that happened. I would like to preempt what I'm about to say with the fact that Lore truly is sincere in her apologies, her kryptonite is being told that she has hurt anyone for any reason, and she absolutely wasn't trying to just appease anyone with her apologies, she actually believed she did something wrong and wanted to make amends. If you know this woman, and I do, she takes all of this at face value, assumes the best in everyone, and that, in my mind, is what makes her truly vulnerable to bad faith attacks. Case in point, if you tell Lore that her doing the Harlem Shake wounded you on a personal level, she will believe you. So herein lies my criticism for Lore or for anyone else whose kindness will make them a target. When you apologize for something you didn't do or shouldn't apologize for to appease the feelings of others, you are validating their grievance against you. You are giving their claims your stamp of approval, and you are putting yourself in a position where you owe them penance. Now, most of the time, if you don't have a platform of 100,000 subscribers, that penance will begin and end with the words, I'm sorry. However, when you've gotten to a place in a community where a mega stadium is scrutinizing every move you make, all it takes is one misplaced apology to set a precedent that, if left unchallenged, will change the community in a way that is neither healthy nor reasonable for anyone involved. Because when you accrue a following that big, there are certain people who are just waiting for you to fall. They intend to eat popcorn while you're plummeting. Your detractors will be happy to fill in the ignorant on what happened with their own twisted version of events, with each retelling tossing out context in favor of impact. Until eventually we go from lovely lore, who hates Trump, accidentally clicked like on a Trump supporter's post, a party known for its racism, to this is proof that lovely lore is a racist herself. 
life. And it is for this reason that apologizing for something that you shouldn't can escalate a minor problem into something worthy of making you crawl. When you apologize for something that you shouldn't, you are handing that person a blank check that says you will validate their claims regardless of the truth. You make yourself vulnerable to cynical opportunists hoping to topple you, and you advertise to the wider community that other people's feelings take importance over what actually happened. This logic means that if you in any way hurt or upset anyone for any reason, now you must apologize. And apologize and apologize some more, each round bringing more attention to what was a small mistake, each time drawing another crowd who will have more grievances in a cycle of whack-a-mole that ends with you trying to hit a subterranean rodent that has grown to the size of a city bus. You try throwing that tinker toy hammer at a rat bigger than God and tell me how that goes. Put frankly, if I had to apologize every time I hurt someone's feelings, I'd have been run off the internet the moment I first feuded with the Belgians, pissed off a certain community in Houston, or told a certain breed of whiny Brit to shove it up their bum. So I admit it, this is as much about my sense of survival as it is about common goddamn sense. But you know what's truly selfish? And this is specifically aimed at lore. As your friend, watching you get treated that way twisted me up in ways I don't want to describe. I was furious at how people that absolutely knew better took the first opportunity to cynically weaponize their grievances, sickened by the number that worked to isolate you from your support network, and utterly devastated to see their abuse meted out in a video where I watched my friend submit to people who meant her harm, and then she thanked them for the opportunity. A friend that told me to leave her there while people insulted her told her how to think and wore their patronizing bullshit like a badge of honor while rubbing her nose in the dirt. All because you're too goddamn kind to defend yourself. And you worry so much about hurting someone else that people mistake that for weakness and routinely take advantage of your goodwill. The truth is that I worry that something like this might happen for a while. And now that it has, I want you to know, as fracking painful as it is right now, if we let this twisted version of accountability stand, it will get worse. The moment you breathe in the wrong direction, everything you've apologized for will be dug back up and dragged through the streets, and you will be back to square one. And in order to stop this dangerous precedent before it spreads, I need you to extend some of that boundless kindness to yourself. I need you to understand that as your friend, watching people with dishonest intentions or unreasonable expectations treat you like some kind of object pisses me off. But worse than that, Watching them codify their abuse as the work of social justice puts me in a position where I have to make you uncomfortable, both to defend my friend and counter the unhealthy norms your detractors will install for their own personal benefit so they can rise while you fall. So while it's true that you don't deserve any of this shit, Unless you extend some of that kindness to yourself for the sake of your own mental health and the community that is watching you, it will happen again. And it will be so much worse next time. Because if there is anything I've learned from my time in leftist spaces, it is that forgiveness is not an option. They will trot out everything you've apologized for again. And eventually, there will come a day where you can't get your head low enough to appease the crowd, and where the only option left is for you to go away. And as your friend, I don't want that. As a person in this community with a platform, I won't tolerate this becoming a norm. So while I know this particular installment wasn't exactly easy for anyone watching, I want to leave you with one final point that I believe is relevant for those who would see this attempt at a culture of abuse and paranoia countered. Penned by Joe Freeman for Ms. Magazine in 1976, she writes on trashing, which was the precursor to the canceling we know today. Once under attack, there is little a woman can do to defend herself, because she is by definition always wrong. But there is a great deal that those who are watching can do to prevent her from being isolated and ultimately destroyed. Trashing only works well when its victims are alone, because the essence of trashing is to isolate a person and attribute a group's problems to her. Support from others cracks this facade and deprives the trashers of their audience. It turns a rout into a struggle. In short, friends don't let friends surrender to Twitter.
This has been Tyler. You've been watching Scarfing Scarves. I'd like to thank my patrons for putting up with the time it took to turn drunken bellowing into coherent thought. And should you like to join their number for reasons that I will never understand, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews or not. This is a choose your own adventure type of mental health preservation. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next time.